Right, hello again. Excuse the setup, I have been trying my best to get my camera set up in the best way possible. So I've had to rearrange my desk because this is big. And I was hoping it would fit on my desk if, if I could just manoeuvre my camera. I do need a better camera set up but this will have to do for now. Right, so this is a video that's going to be unboxing and trying out the Gina K Designs Intricut Cutting and Embossing Machine. If you're not interested why I came to settle on this particular machine after doing my research, then I will split the video up into chapters so you can just skip ahead if you want to. So for a while now I've been wanting a new die cutting and embossing machine. A small one. I'm still happy with my Big Shot Plus. It's amazing. It's great for cutting out your, your big, for your big projects. It like, takes A4 stencils, A4 embossing folders. Because I wanted a small one also for, for my craft room. So I opted for this. The, it's the Crafter's Companion Gemini MIDI. Now it's not quite as heavy as some of the others out there and it cuts and embosses absolutely fine so no problems with how this machine works but it absolutely demolishes the folders and anything you put through it really does. I mean this this has been sat on something really heavy all weekend and it was even worse than this before I, I put it on something heavy. I've heard of people sort of scalding it with a boiling kettle, boiling kettle water obviously, and then stacking books and things on top of it. But to be honest, anything that goes through this Gemini MIDI buckles. I haven't used this very much so it hasn't buckled a lot, but it is starting to bend there. So I thought, right, what I can do, because I've always wanted a magnetic, a magic mat from Spellbinders. So I thought I'll try that. And honestly, it's supposed to be so good that it's not supposed to buckle or bend, no matter what you put it through. But one passed through this and it started to buckle it, to bend it, and I thought, oh, that's it. That's it now. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I am still going to keep this, but it's been relegated to my bedroom in my little crafting box, my little mini crafting box, for when I am stuck in bed for one reason or another. But I did want another small one for my craft room because the Sizzix Big Shot is big and it's heavy and sometimes it's just it's just too much to lug around and keep carrying backwards and forwards. So why the Gina K Designs Intricut? Because I did a lot of research. There are a lot of die cutting machines and embossing machines out there. So for a while now I've been doing my research and I've been humming and hawing and should I or shouldn't I? And eventually, after a few weeks, it came down to this one and the Sizzix fold away. And it was so close between the two that I couldn't really decide. So I thought what I'll do is I'll just have a look at a couple of the features I like on either of them and see if that makes a difference. So the Sizzix fold away, you can actually, it, it, you can fold it up as the, the title suggests and you don't have to remove the handle you can sort of unclick the handle and move it around so it's tucked in against the side of the machine so it's really easy to store. This one you can't do that but you can take the handle off and you don't need to use an allen key or something to take it off which is, is good. So that kind of tipped the scales a little bit towards the Sizzix fold away was the handle could be tucked away neatly without having to remove it. But what finally decided me on this is the fact that you're not messing around with a lot of platforms and cutting plates. As far as I know there, were, there are only two in here because as you can see it has these dials and we're going to be looking a bit closer into what they mean. So I'm going to open this now, turn it around so I can undo it 
I did open the box to make sure everything was there, but I haven't taken it out yet. Let's have a look. I hope you can see that okay. I'm really sorry I don't have a better camera set up. Oops. So, that, oh well, I'm going to turn this around because it's hitting the back against the back of my camera. So this is what's inside. So, that looks like the platforms there. I'll be opening those in a minute. And this is the machine. Oh, it is heavy. <laughs> it is still quite heavy. But I'll take off the little leg box things. And this is what we are left with. So, this does fold away like the Sizzix. And as far as I know, let me have a look. You can open these like that and push them in and that makes them quite solid there. You can open these up. Oh, that stores the handle apparently. Where's the handle? What on earth have I done with the handle? Okay, silly me. I forgot to check the other side. <laughs> Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> it actually has handle on both sides so you can store your handle. So you can store things in there, you can store your little tools that you need, your little tweezers or whatever that you need. You can store a few dies in there and when you put that down I think you can pull it out like that and like that and store it up like that and that could just tuck away nicely. So now the handle. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can see there, I haven't noticed this before, it has, it looks like lock and unlock. And you must pull it, that's right, so you must pull it down to unlock, put it on and then lock. And then that doesn't come off, that's brilliant that. And although it doesn't, like I said, this you can't tuck this away like you can with a Sizzix. You can just, if you can see that, just pull that and it comes off and then you can store it in here. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Not at all. Right, so here's the platforms. That's the manual, which I am <laughs> definitely going to need. And here are the platforms. So we have adapter for steel ruled die only. This is not a cutting surface. So we'll be having a look in that booklet to see exactly what you need to do with each of these. Ah, oh, this is the cutting mat. Use front and back side interchangeably. Different placement of compatible tools on the mat when cutting and embossing for longer duration. Inappropriate use will shorten the product life. So if you're using dies, just put them on either side. Use both sides. Use the surface area as much as possible and it will it sounds obvious, doesn't it, that it will lengthen the, the life of your cutting mat. And this is just the platform. I imagine that this platform is the one that you need to use for everything. Whatever you're cutting or embossing. But what also came with it is this little intricate exclusive high quality cutting dies. Let's get started. So it comes with a few dies, so you can you can try it out and you're ready to go. But I also wanted this silicone mat. Now I have I haven't tried this, but what you can do apparently is emboss with your dies and your stencils. I am very very excited about this because I've been wanting to try something like that for a while. Now as I said before. I do have a magnetic mat, a magic mat from Scrapbook, oh Scrapbook.com, oh I apologise Scrapbook.com, I thought it was Spellbinders. So Scrapbook.com magnetic mat. So I am wondering if this can be used with this but I, I don't really want to try it without doing my research first because I don't want to break anything and if there's something to break then I will be the one to break it. So what I want to show you now, hang on, I'll take this off. 
because I'm bound to break it. I think it's great that you can tuck it away in there, just like that. Right, so put that back up. Now what, I think, yeah, this is what tipped the balance because you don't need many platforms, you don't need to figure out a sandwich because of these special dials. So you have a dial there for 3 d emboss, and these dials determine the amount of pressure that the machine uses when you put anything through it. So that's your 3D emboss, letter press and 2D emboss, and that's your die cut. Now from what I can gather, most of the time you don't need to touch this, because this can be this can also alter the pressure. Most people seem to just leave this alone. Um, but I think you do, if you want to use your dies and stencils to emboss, then I think you do have to adjust this, but that's something that I'll look at later on. So like what I'm going to do is now have a look through this brochure and then I'll come back and I will try a few things out. Right, I've had a quick look and apparently it can cut over 40 different materials including wool, balsa wood, chipboard, craft metal, leather and more. So some heavy materials require steel ruled dies to cut. Okay, well I don't know what those are because I haven't used them. Right, so inside it gives you the sandwich that you need for each one. So for cutting dies, the die will have to be set to die cut. I think that's quite self-explanatory. So we need the platform. Right, so I'm going to be using these. Might as well. I'll use the heart. It has quite an intricate pattern. We'll see how we go on with that. I'm just going to use scraps. Right, so apparently that goes down like that. And then the paper. I suppose if you wanted to, you could tape it down. Anyway, I'm just going to do what it says. I'm going to, I will experiment with this, but I'm just going to do what it says on here. Put that like that, and then use the cutting mat over the top. Right, so that's the sandwich for that. So, I'll open these. Take them in. And where's the handle? Take out the handle. Oh, and it, <laughs> it has suction. Wow, did you see that? It has suction on the bottom. Wow, <laughs> which is really, really strong. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, so I shall put on the handle. Yeah, I like that. So now I'll take this and put it through and see what happens. It's turning very easily, it doesn't feel as though it has a lot of pressure there, but we'll see how it goes. I can't even move that now. Ah right, there we go. And of course all cutting mats, if you're a bit if you're horrified at the mark on there, don't worry about it. All cutting mats end up having to be replaced because they all go they all get marked like that and you can just vary the placement of your dies and the side in which you use. Right, so that has cut actually really very well. Look at that, you see I should have shown that on camera. That has cut really, really well. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that actually. Okay. No problems there at all. And that's a fairly intricate die. Not majorly in intricate, but enough. And of course, if you wanted to, you could keep all of these bits and colour them in and place them back inside of the heart on some card for a lovely little pattern. So that cuts very, very nicely. Now, if I want to emboss, what do I need? So to emboss, we need I'll forget about that bit for now because that is embossing with your dies, embossing folders. So it needs to be 
For the 2D embossing folder, obviously, the dial needs to be to the top. Letter press 2D emboss. So we need the platform, again, the embossing folder and the cutting mat. I think it's great, you only really need two of the mats. I need to have a 2D embossing folder here, I'll just open it. This is just a cheap one with script on. Right, I'm just going to cut a piece of paper about the same size. So again, we have the platform, we have the folder and we have the cutting mat. So let's see what happens with this. And look, you can do it with just one hand. That suction is so strong, you don't even need to hold it down if you don't want to. So let's see what's happened with this. Oh yes, that has embossed beautifully. That is really nice. Wow. Do you know, sometimes I often wonder whether I've made the right decision when it comes to expensive purchases but this to me so far is the right decision. Let me try a 3D embossing folder. Where's my other bit of paper? At? Okay this is actually a Sizzix 3D embossing folder. So turn that to 3D emboss. I'm not going to touch the bottom dial but I am not going to force it through either. If there's any, if there's too much resistance, I'm going to stop. I do not want to break anything. So I'm just going to put that in there. Just to make sure 3D emboss. Ah, so 3D emboss, you just need the platform and the embossing folder. Please, I saw that. Right, it doesn't feel as though there's a lot of pressure on there actually. I may have to adjust the dial. I was um, still getting used to the machine and still messing around a little bit. I still wanted to try and get this right with this, as you can see, this 3D embossing folder. So what I did was I turned the bottom dial right round to negative four just to see if it would give me the pressure that I needed. So I'm going to try that. Yeah, it feels as though there's a little bit more pressure there, but still not a ton. I don't know, we'll see. Right, yeah, that has definitely worked. But to be honest, for a 3D embossing fold, it still haven't, hasn't given me quite the pressure that I would need because this isn't thick cardstock. For a thick, thicker cardstock that might be just absolutely fine. So the next part of the video is going to show you an alternative way to use a 3D embossing folder with this machine. And one more thing, don't do what I've been doing this whole video. Don't try to lift this with these sides still down because the suckers are just far too strong. I'm going to end up breaking something. Put these away and then you can lift it up and move it like that. So what I'm going to do is try some kind of shim. This might actually work. It's a little, it's the little mat that comes with the Gemini MIDI. That might just be enough to give it the pressure that I need to emboss the Sizzix folder. Right, I can feel a bit more pressure there. So I suppose it is trial and error really. I suppose unless you are make, using embossing folders designed for this it's going to be a bit more difficult. But look at that, yeah that's worked out nicely. So it just looked as though I needed, because this isn't a particularly thick embossing folder as you can see. It's not, it is 3D but it's not as thick. But using that has actually come in handy, <laughs> little Gemini MIDI shim there. I don't think I have any thicker embossing folders, I'll just have a quick look. Right, so almost all of my embossing, all 3D embossing folders are from Sizzix. I think they must have had a sale on, because I, I have a load. 
what I bought ages ago. So I'm going to try that again. I, I don't know if this looks, it looks about the same, doesn't it? It doesn't really look any thicker. So once again, I will try it with some scrap card. So bear in mind, this is not very thick card at all. So that might have something to do with the sandwich. So I'm going to try this first again. I don't want to force anything. And this one from the Gemini Midi is perfect. And I'm sure they sell these separately if you, if you did decide you wanted a, some kind of a shim. So I'll have a look and I'll, I'll leave a link to it if I find it. And it fits perfectly through this intricate. Oh yeah, that has embossed beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous. That is embossed really, really nicely. And um, because I didn't, because I've used quite thin card and I didn't spray it with water, it is cracked a little bit through the pattern. But yep, that is beautiful. I think that's the first time I've used that folder actually. And the next thing I'm going to try is embossing with dies and stencils. That is the reason I purchased this silicone mat to go with this. Also from Gina K. We need a die, so I'll take the same die, this one. And for this we need the cutting mat, sorry we need the platform, the die, obviously the card, the mat and the cutting mat. Okay, I think I've got, I think I've got that. <laughs> okay, so once again, that facing up, I'll put it at the top this time, paper, the silicone mat and the cutting mat and it needs to be on 2D letterpress and 2D emboss. I think I have the sandwich right so I shall put that through now. Oh wow! Obviously that it slipped a little bit, but oh look at that. That is embossed. I've never had never been able to emboss a, with a die before. I have tried using various tutorials, but that's lovely. Right, so this time <clears throat> I'm going to turn down, I'm gonna it's this bottom dial, I'm gonna turn down to negative one and see if I can get a bit less pressure, or perhaps negative two. See if I can get a bit less pressure. So yeah, maybe negative two was a bit too much. I should have put it on negative one. But you can adjust the lower dial to get a less deep impression like that. So perhaps it's just a matter of trial and error. It depends on what you like. But I like that. So I'm going to turn that dial back to the top, to zero. And I'm going to find a stencil. It shouldn't be too difficult. I have a million of them. And some more paper. And I think you just do the same again. So, stencil. The card. The silicone mat. And the cutting mat. Let's see what happens here. Hmm, doesn't feel like a lot of pressure. Perhaps I need to up the pressure a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to up the pressure. I'll just have a quick look, see what's happened. Yeah, it has. It has worked, which is amazing in itself. That's lovely, isn't it? You can actually emboss with your, your stencils now. It's, I, I suppose it is going to be trial and error to get the pressure right. But the fact that I can use this, use my dies and stencils to emboss with is just amazing. I mean, this has been well worth the money. It wasn't even that expensive and it's brilliant. And of course, this machine, which I cannot say enough about. I've struggled a little bit because something new for me is always going to be a bit of a struggle. But I just, 
I just I, I do I love it right so put that away and if there's anything else that you want to pop in to store in there like your little tweezers or anything I actually have I have two of these so I shall keep one out and I shall keep one in here I think I seem to have two of everything are you the same when you're crafting you just buy two of everything for no reason right so again to put away pull these out gently some people don't clip these in when they when they're using the machine I think that's a bad idea because I have a feeling these could break off so always clip them in like that when you're going to use the machine pull them out and gently lift them up clip them in and that's it that is just ready to put away now as I said once again I'm going to go through this so actually yeah that was number one so to get I actually turned it the wrong way for the stencil I should have turned it this way on to the negative side for a deeper impression so to emboss with your stencils and your dies make sure that's on the top dial is on to letter press and 2d embossing and that seems to be okay for the dies but you may want to turn it around to have a little bit less pressure off your stencils you can turn it that way to have a little bit more pressure just get a, a little bit of a deeper impression so I might try that and, and see what happens but I am over the moon with this it's it wasn't cheap and it is fairly heavy but I consider this a really good decision it was a toss-up between this and the Sizzix Fold Away which I have heard really really good reviews about it and as I said it was very very close it's only the fact that you have these dials and you just have a couple of mats to use you don't have to mess around with sandwiches and that sometimes there may be things that you need to do just to adjust the pressure have a little shim or something on it but that's I think that's the case with all die cutter machines isn't it you're always going to have a bit of a faff on with them just until you get to, to know because getting to know something new is always a bit of a challenge but I'm going to be quite happy to get to know my Gina K Intricut machine I really like it so I don't know if this has been helpful I don't know if you've used this I mean you might prefer another one contrasting views are always welcome so if you want to post in the comments or if you want to post on my Facebook group just join post your opinions post your reviews I don't mind if they differ from mine so in the meantime thank you so much for watching I really deeply appreciate it as always don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified of any other videos that I may upload thank you so much for watching and have a great day bye bye now